All right, I think we can start. Um, this session is about um, the possibilities of a layout builder, uh, mainly for site builders and content editors. And we recently, recently added a little part about content staging as well. Uh, who are we? Uh, my name is Wesley. I'm an <coughs> enterprise architect at uh, uh, DropSolid. Uh, DropSolid is a company from Belgium, and I am from Belgium as well. And I'm Frederik Wouters. I'm also an uh, enterprise architect at DropSolid. Um, and I have a, a small request before we start, because it's our first time that we present in the United States. Actually, also my first time just in the States uh, to Cour. So if it's OK, we'd like to take a selfie, uh, just the two of us and you in the background. <laughs> Okay, how does that feel? You moved after reading? That's good. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, we're for DropSolid. We work for DropSolid, and DropSolid is a company based in Europe. Um, it's a fairly young company, eight years old, and we have around 80, I think now almost 100 people uh, that are from multiple co uh, countries in Europe. Um, we have partners on, in multiple countries and multiple continents and are growing fast. Um, we also um, are going to talk about the layout builder. We did some research on it and improvements on it. We create our own um, install profile, and we're going to show all that. Uh, we also do contributions. We have a lot of modules that people at DropSolid work on, uh, projects that we support, and we also sponsor DrupalCon in Europe, uh, mostly, and events like the DevDays. Um, DropSolid as a company focuses on the digital experience platform, which means that it's uh, a combination of Drupal with uh, Apache Unomi, a CDP, and Martic as a marketing automation platform. If you're interested in more on personalization or marketing automation with Drupal, talk to me after the presentation. Uh, DropSolid also does more than personalization. We also do the optimization. For example, SEO, we also do uh, development or design or strategy and we also try to do that in an open, sustainable way. But we're going to talk about Layout Builder. And if you're going to talk about the future, you can't talk about the future without looking at the past. So yeah, um, we'll start with some um, uh, history about um, content editing. Uh, that's mainly structured field, paragraph, WordPress, style quick edit, and then finally, where we are at now, it's being a layout builder. Um, uh, maybe uh, this slide uh, will give you some context. Um, so Drupal 1 is all the way in uh, 2001, uh, if I'm correct, yeah, and uh, that's before things like WordPress, um, but also before things like um, uh, HTML5 or um, Composer, or maybe you can add it. Facebook, as you see, and WordPress. So it's it's an old an old project already. Uh, <laughs> but the, the things that I want to show with this slide, actually, this is a slide that Dries presented at a, at another DrupalCon. But I added the Drupal version on top. Why did I do that? Because it shows you that we it's just not, it's not a new thing where everybody jumps on it. No, it's already like a proven thing where all the good stuff has stayed and all the like the extras got removed. Uh, so this is like we're doing like the good sauce, not just something that we just invented. Okay, um, structured fields, first one. I'm, I'm sure all of you are familiar with structured field because it's still in, uh, in, in Drupal as of now and in uh, a couple of other CMSs as well. Uh, so we have a content type. Uh, this one is the, the event content type. Um, it has a title field as it has a description field maybe some custom fields and, uh, and for an event, a date field would, would also be, be quite useful. Um, it's still what we use today and it's still, still a very good basic uh, um, and a very good way of having structured data on your content. 
Um, but then we improved. Um, we did structured content for, for, for quite a while, like, actually. Um, and then we improved to some more like a WordPress style inline editing. Yeah, and this is actually uh, for for most editors like the wet dream of content editing. Eh? They just want like go wild, inline edit uh, everything, but and that doesn't fit with Drupal very good because you have things like moderation and multilinguality, and you want to reuse structured content inside this rich editing experience. So there's some things that are hard to combine. Uh, we have a small demo on how it looks. The uh, Gutenberg, which was one of the popular ways to do inline editing in Drupal. Actually, <laughs> actually close it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Drupal Gutenberg, yeah. And it's re it's really nice way to editing. It's you all know it because Medium also works like that. You can just click on that text and start editing. Yeah, editors love this kind of thing. Uh, so this is. If, you, if we could combine this with structured content editing in Drupal, then we have the best of both worlds. And that's actually where we want the content, where content editors want to go. Uh, the problem with this is, as we showed in the presentation, yeah, it's very hard to combine this with structured content. Uh, this is all this, all this uh, thing is just editing HTML and saving it into one field, which is not a very structured or sustainable way of doing things. Um, okay, good. So yeah, um, <clears throat> that's uh, everything uh, Frederick already told us. So uh, things that are hard with this are things like um, moderation workflow, uh, multilingual stuff, um, uh, reuse of content is also not very easy, and uh, the actual unstructured type of thing. It, it can be used, and it is used. Uh, we just checked it, it has about 3,000 um, um, uses on uh, on, on uh, Drupal.org at the moment, uh, but it's mostly used for for blog style websites. Um, then we have uh, what we call old school dynamic, uh, and old school dynamic. What we mean by that is basically paragraphs. Uh, I'm, I'm sure, pretty sure everybody have used has used paragraph. Maybe show of hands. Anybody? Okay. <laughs> Great, but then you'll know what, what, what we're talking about. I mean, most companies and uh, most Drupal companies have been using paragraphs for quite some time. I think at Drop Solid we've done this for, I don't know, five years, maybe, something like that. And, and this very long list, which is not readable at all, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's, it's the very long list of, of uh, paragraph types that we provide in our install profile, or we, that we did provide. Um, um, uh, to have our, the, our clients or our content editors who are working uh, at our clients um, build their, their, uh, <clears throat> their pages. Um, don't think uh, we need to do uh, a demo of that. Um, no. Everybody knows it, so you know how it looks. Um, then, um, then there was a new thing, sort of a new thing, but it was about uh, around the same time, it's, it was called uh, Quick Edit, and uh, it allowed for inline editing. I'm, I'm sure all of you already know what Quick Edit is. It just allowed you to just, uh, in the front end, just uh, cl click on a, on, a, on a piece of content and then do sim very simple uh, uh, edits uh, on it, like uh, change, change the text or uh, add, add some uh, markup to it. But as some of you may know already, this is going to be uh, out of core again, or it's already out of core again, so. It, it's gonna be out of core in, in Drupal 10, if I'm correct. Sorry. Um, so and then we come to um, a new style, uh, so being layout builder. So what's the difference here? Um, so we still have the structure and the, and the metadata. I didn't really mention it before, but on all the other stuff, there was still the structured uh, data fields um, that we here have in, in, in the yellow color. But on top of that, uh, instead of using paragraphs, we now have sections. And each section could be something like a header or your content or a footer or whichever you want. And under each section, uh, there is a, a, a block. And in a more visual way, that looks like this. So uh, where you would have paragraphs, it would all be um, like, uh, just be under each other, and then some people would do like sub paragraphs or 
embedding paragraphs and other programs to, to get the same, but this is more what, what uh, was the point of uh, a playoff builder to have like these sections that could uh, have columns and you could put one or more. And this also allows you to combine more. Eh? So one section is like one division and you could combine any type of block in this section. So you, as an editor, you can like combine all kinds of blocks for that to do, to be able to do that with paragraphs, you need to create like a gazillion uh, amount of paragraphs. Uh. So um, this is all already a bit how, how this works. So uh, you, w when you add a, a section, you can uh, select which, how many columns you, you want on it. And then <clears throat> this is already a, bit, a little bit of our preview uh, of our demo, uh, and you can add some blocks to it as well. Um, that does come with some confusion. Uh, mainly, um, we used to have just blocks in, uh, in, in Drupal, and that was very clear. The blocks were not for content editors, uh, but they were very reusable. But then, along the way, and along all the, the Drupal versions, um, uh, more and more uh, of them became uh, for the content editors. And then now we have inline blocks, which are part of the layout builder. They are not really reusable, or that's not how we use them uh, in, in Layout Builder, uh, and they are just part of the content. So that can be a little bit um, confusing, but the difference is mainly the context. So if you add a, a, a block in, uh, in your um, block overview and you add it to, uh, to your header, then it's on every page, or if you limit the visibility, then that won't be. But and the inline blocks, they are used for layout builder and they are only visible on the page that you added at that specific. So no worries, we're going to show it. Definitely. Um, layout builder core, uh, that's about how it looks. Um, yeah, I do have some issues with that. So uh, you're all, well, maybe some of you already tried it out and I also tried it out and I didn't find my way in there. So um, here you see we uh, installed a, a clean Drupal 9 and if you would ask like a child, I have a boy of uh, nine years old, if I would ask him like, can you add an image to this page? It's nearly impossible. Uh, so they would find maybe the add block button and then they would see on the right side and if you have somewhere a field that's called an image field, they would click it but it wouldn't work because it's not on a content type. So, and they would like scratch their head and like, uh, how do I add an image to this thing? And then maybe they would add custom block, like, okay, create a custom block. And then they would find there is an image in this HTML thing, but this is not how you want to work with this, right? Uh, so out of core, the experience isn't really very great. Uh, and this is something that we uh, uh, improved on like uh, quite a lot. Um, um, what they did do very well is they provided the API, the underlying structure for other systems to build upon. And as you see here, there's Layout Builder in core. They have like the, the, the system, the, the, the API, and there's Bootstrap Layout Builder, there's Layout Paragraphs, Layout Components, and our distribution rocket ship. And so there's multiple ways to go interact with these layouts in Drupal core, which I think is a very good idea. It's a bit like Search API, or other API modules that are in there. So we're using the Layout Builder API uh, to make these pages really, really nice. And other mo modules do this as well. Um, as you see, there was already a session yesterday about layout paragraphs. They're also using it very nicely. Um, but the only thing is they're very dependent on paragraphs only, and they're not really using the, like, like the Layout Builder API, um, which we do in our distribution much more. Uh, it's a different way of uh, going at it. There's also layout components, which is a, a different module to tackle the same problem. There's also bootstrap layout builder by the guys from ImageX Media, also a very nice module. They're working really hard on it, so certainly check it out as well. Um, and uh, as it goes with standards, uh, how standards proliferate situations, there are three or four competing layout builder implementations. How ridiculous, let's build our own. Uh, so that's what we did. Uh, of course, we didn't just build it. Uh, luckily, we have someone that did some UX research. She's called Ines. She had also a talk in another DrupalCon, and she did some research on, uh, like, she just put someone in a chair, like, try this. She wrote it down. We improved on it, and this way we improved the experience, like, uh, quite a lot. 
Um, our distribution is called rocket ship, so it's called drop solid rocket ship. You can check it out, but don't go too fast. Don't uh, do it just yet on your computer because in the end, there will be a link and you can try it. We have an online version, so you can just log in, create an account and try some stuff. Uh, so you don't need to try it out, or check it out and stuff. It's really easy, you'll see. Um, okay, and this is the moment. This is the moment. <laughs> I'll, I'll just go to the next I slide. I love the enthusiasm, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do a, a little demo. The, the desk is a little bit low, so I'll do my best um, to let me know if I'm not speaking in the mic anymore. <laughs> so I um, oh, already, already forgot something. Um, it says uh, over here, sales sales pitch um, and the reason why it says sales pitch is not because I want to sell something to you guys it's uh, it's because uh, this is how um, a drop solid uh, my, part, part of my job is to go to clients and this is how I sell them RCMS being Drupal obviously so that's really how well, I'm, I'm going to try to do this demo not to sell it to you guys but how I would sell it to to our clients so and in order to do that, usually I just, I just pick a page on their current website. Most companies already have a current website. Uh, so I picked one on, a, on, a, on the site of this event, uh, being the plan your trip of, um, of Drupalcom. Uh, it's, it's, it's right over here, uh, this one. Um, and I, uh, I'm going to rebuild it. And the goal is to, to build something like this. Uh, this isn't... This isn't really a demo then, because I already did it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, I'll go back to my uh, revisions, and uh, hopefully everything works, and I can uh, revert to that one. So yeah, here I, I just added all the all the content already. I'll I'll show a bit more, but this is just the plain content that I copied from uh, from the website, uh, from the original website. And um, just to let you know, this is just a page. page. If I would make it, I would just... Small intervention. Yeah, yeah. As you see here, um, he clicked the create page and you, you are now editing the structured metadata, which is like the standard edit way of editing content where there's a structured field. So it's not the layout that we're editing here. Yeah? When you're done that, yeah, so I would just uh, start with creating a page. If I want to create that page, then we indeed have uh, the destruction and meta that I over here. And I don't know if you can see that there, that there, there in the bottom, it's the edit page. And then we have the... Yeah, so, uh, no, sorry, a small intervention again. What we also did is we install a module that changes the edit link on uh, content types. So it will be structure and metadata. And the edit, the managed content is actually uh, what what's in like the standard uh, installation layout. And so this is a, a module that we, we also linked it in the presentation, you can find it later, just for the confused people, structure and metadata is an edit with the structured fields and managed content is a layout. Sorry. No, no worries. So like I showed in the, in, in the slides, uh, we can add a, a section, I'll just go for a single column one. After that, uh, we'll add a block you can see the layout is, a, is, is also quite a bit different here. Maybe you can say something about that. Um, so, uh, but that's just UI changes. Uh, these are all contributed modules, uh, some, some of which we wrote, some of which already exist. So we can just add some text to it. That's this one. I have a request. My, the nine-year-old in me would like to add an image as well, so if you could keep. Keep that in mind. I'll, I'll add an image. <laughs> so um, this is it's just, uh, I'll, I'll switch to the page I already created. Uh, what we did here is just, these are just custom block, custom block types, um, which just feels like, you know, in paragraphs, but they just built as custom blocks. Uh, and we added some extra things like a button here, and then we had a link to it, and then Usually that should be something else. I know it should be on the original page. It's uh, like the link to the Hilton. 
Um, and then we already have, ha have that. And then in order to avoid that, I have to create all this content. Again, that's the reason why I prepared it. So you can see it over here. Um, what I'll do now is just uh, show you how I created that page, um, that same page, but um, that looks a little bit better, hopefully a little bit be better than the page that we, um, that we have on the original website. So it's just very easy, drag and drop. This thing alone, if you show this to your clients, that you can drag and drop things around that will really Especially, especially for clients who, who have used Drupal before, that will really amaze them. They will be like, oh, it's really visual. Um, also, have a, have a little, made a little change here in core. This is just a checkbox, but you can just go from show preview with editability uh, to a preview only or to uh, editability only. Uh, that's useful, useful for large images if you want to move them around. And yes. Especially... So yeah, this shows you the structure of what's all in the page and this allows you to drag and drop it easily because sometimes we want to add like full page with things and it's hard to drag them around. So when you then switch to editability or the structured way, then you can easily drag and drop those around. So um, if I remember correctly, I then added a single column one. I'll move that over here, this one over here. See, this is where the difficulty becomes because my screen is a bit smaller, the uh, resolution a bit smaller. So then you can easily switch to the editability one and, and then move it over here. Switch to preview again. So that works easy. Um, Let's add another one, another section. Um, okay, okay, don't, no worries. <laughs> don't, don't forget my image. Oh yeah, I forgot your image. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll add an image. I'll remove an image and then I'll add it again because I already prepared it, yeah, sorry about that. Or no, I'll add a new image. I'll add an image of, of Portland. I, 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 let's let's do that first. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, we'll add an image. Uh, I have an image of Portland somewhere over here. Uh, so it, obviously it works with, with uh, media library as well. Just a second here. Uh, maybe um, when you go back, um, what you see here, when he clicks the add block button, there is a list of blocks and here as an editor I see that there are and these are inline blocks this is like uh, a drop down with all the inline block types that we created it's like you could look at them as like the paragraphs only these are blocks that are in a section uh, this is like an important thing to understand but as you see there's also custom blocks you could create your own blocks and we filter down the amount of blocks that editors can see because we're logged in as an editor in this um, in this uh, mm -hmm. site here but when you log in with uh, higher permissions, you see all the blocks that your system has, and you can also use them in this nice layout. So this allows you to really use the structured content with the drag and drop way inside your pages, which, which I personally think is mind-blowing, because this is actually the marriage of the structured content and the inline editing, which, like, yeah, <sighs> it makes me emotional. So, well... Uh at the request of Frederick, uh, we'll add an image. Um, and uh, I, I looked for a nice image of, uh, of Portland, uh, this one over here actually. Um, and uh, what we did is, is some very, uh, adding, adding some modules to it that allow you to change the layout of your block as well. So like here we, we have like the normal layout of we can, or we can do it stretched and then we can also mani manipulate the, the image format, I think uh, this one might work uh, for this image. This is like the stretched one where it's hard to drag and drop it, but then you'd switch to the structure of view so you can easily drag it around, which is editors like this kind of stuff. Also important to note, we're just using some styling and it, nothing in Drupal changes. You can just style it how you want, make the images slide in or do whatever CSS effects that you want. I'm not the big fan of CSS, but if you want to do that, this combines very nicely. That's just a Drupal way of doing things. 
Also, it's just blocks. You can do everything to them what you could do to blocks before. Oh, I did that thing again. Um, where I, I accidentally clicked on the back button uh, and now I lost all my changes. Yeah, that's amazing. But it's all saved. Um, yeah, that's, that's cool. And it, I didn't really plan for that, but it is cool. <laughs> Uh, this is also in Drupal core, by the way. It's, it's not something uh, custom. Yeah, quickly check it before you publish it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so now what we did is just uh, yeah. add, add some structure to it, as in not really structure. Structure is a bad word here, but. Um, uh, Add some some layout like added added the columns then all the columns uh, so it's just a bit more readable obviously if you want to show this to your client show them as well that it uh, that is this is uh, responsive that if you show it on a on a smaller screen that it will work um, I have a request right could you ahead. change the background in one of these blocks because uh, I think Mo the color combinations are are a little bit off could you do that most definitely. Um, Editors tend to ask these kind of things. So yeah, and it's what I did now is just I, I just changed the background, but it's not changing the background. It's again one of those layout things that, that we changed, and it's just added a, a from a front end part of view. It's just adding a CSS class. Uh, and it's it's nothing more more than than adding a CSS class. But that CSS class changed changed the background to blue, and then it also changed the the font. Uh, color to white. Yes, and just uh, for the more technical people, this is also configurable. So in the in the back end of the site, there is a settings field where you could create like multiple types of settings where you can link them to classes. And then in your styling, you can link those classes to whatever theming that you want. Or uh, So just as you see the list here with the predefined background colors. This is like for developers, you can do with it what you want. Yeah. Um, and, and also an, an important part here is I, I just changed this one to to gray because our header is also gray. Uh, and the reason why I did is because I can change that header uh, over here and uh, that's what I'll do. I'll, I, I do not want it to be a, a gray background, this one, so it's a, it's, it's a bit more clear. But the important part here, I cannot remove it. Um, and that's also something with some extra modules you can do, like lock some of these sections down, then add, a, add them to your template, and um, making sure that you'll have uh, that header on every page that has your title and stuff like that, but you cannot remove it, or not as a, as a whichever role you have, but, but some roles will be able to change this and other ones won't. So here you can not add an extra block, but you can edit this block. Maybe, um, maybe add a teaser here, like, So I can edit this block, and, and, it, and it's changed, obviously, but I cannot remove it or move it to somewhere uh, lower. So that's because you're an editor. Um, as an administrator, you can change the structure of the page and change all the blocks in the structure of them. Um, I have another uh, request. Um, could, could you like create a, a template or, a lib or like a section that you can then reuse on multiple yeah, things then, of the so for I, I have I've, I've created this structure for one page and I want to, it to be used on all pages or, or for an event kind of page and I want to reuse it for all events. Could you do that? Yeah, definitely. And and that's also an important part that you can give your content creators much more power um, because we have this very easy button here. Just add to library and then I give it a label, just a random label I did now. And then if I want to reuse it. Um, Add a section. Yeah, clicked on the wrong button. Uh, import from library. So here, here's my new uh, uh, section that I just created. And this just makes a copy. I mean, it's, it's still inline blocks. They're not linked to each other. But it allows your content editors to create stuff that they want to reuse by, by themselves. And they don't have to uh, always send an email to support. I want this kind of type. and I. Have I have to use it on 20 pages, and, and this way works very easy. 
So now you showed it how to like use it in the library and reuse it in another page, but how would you do that for a content type? Can you show where uh, the interface is, where they can do that for a content type? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, if I'm logged in, yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, let me copy my URL here. I'm probably logged in my other browser window. So yep. as a, as an administrator, if you go manage the page uh, display, there you will find in the bottom the managed layout of this content type, where you can then do the same kind of editing. Here, if you would click on this page, it looks like exactly the same as you would edit another page. The only difference is that you will then create an entire layout with images and whatever that will be copied for every new type of content from this content type. And the moment an editor starts working on this page and rearranging blocks and changing everything, they create like, how do you, I would call it like a branch or like a separate version. Only thing is from then on it changes and it will not have the changes that happen on the content type uh, sections. And, and so I hope you understand that. Um, and well, it's a nice way to provision pages or events or, or with, with like a basic layout and give them a nice visual, nice visual feel. Yeah, the important thing to understand here is that what you do as an admin, then that gets used as a as the base. Oh, sorry about um, as the base template. But obviously, every time you save something in, in Layout Builder, you're overwriting that thing. So if you then change the the original one, then yeah, obviously that 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 won't have ref have any effect and shouldn't have any effect on the on the um, uh, on the new uh, on the existing pages, only on the new ones. So. I think from from a demo's perspective, I'll just hit save here. It looks much nicer now. Yeah, I'll just um, save. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's about almost about what, what I did in the other one. Um, I think, um, and uh, that concludes the first demo. Yeah. So maybe also interesting to notice all things that you knew apply. Yeah? So workflow or anything that applied to nodes still applies. Yeah, if you do it on the template, you, for the template library, you can just upload an, an icon and that is safe, is safe like that. And for the um, for the ones in the, that are default uh, uh, block types, I think that's a separate module. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, we worked at we worked at, at this install profile with the entire company, so I don't know every detail. Um, but but definitely, uh, it's open source, so you can, you can can look it up. And if you don't find it. Try and find me, and I'll, I'll try and, and, and get in contact with the, with the person who did this. Yes. Um, so I have now an ex existential question because I've seen that like you could you could create multiple types of libraries or, or sections or, or divisions on how to manage your content. If you then only have a content type page, couldn't you then make any website with only pages? Do we still need content types actually? Yeah. Well. well We'll do that in another demo. So uh, I, I, I want to just claim the term content typeless here. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a joke yeah, because I think content types are still important, but uh, we, we, we just invented that like an hour ago, but it's OK. <laughs> so uh, what I did here, I have, a, I have another uh, demo environment here. And, and I just created a theme page, uh, very easy theme page. So first section uh, with, with the two column, and then uh, this is actually uh, not a four column, but a one column, with, which has um, a content um, a content block in it, um, and that block is uh, is actually sort of a view uh, type of thing. Um, and if you get, uh, uh, it, it's just entity reference. So I added some entity references here as well. Uh, so Fredrik is in here, and some other people uh, from our company are in here as well. So. What I'll do now, I'll add um, a new page. Uh, so, like I said, only one content type. Um, let Nick, because he's right here. He's our <laughs> biggest fan. Yeah. Um, was. Yeah. Normally I'll write his title here, but now I'll just write used to be CTO. <laughs> 
Um, uh, and we'll add just an image. So th like, this is like from the slide in the very beginning, structured fields. Um, and then just we'll save that one. Uh, we have an empty page now, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, what I can do here is just go back to my managed contents, uh, edit this block, add Nick. We'll, we'll add Nick for the, for the very last time all the way to the top of the company. Um, he's, he's always in a lot. <laughs> and he inspired a lot of this, by the way. Yeah, so absolutely. Lots of thanks to him. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's basically it. So, so um, we now have a team page with, that just exists out of a page. We do not have a content type team member and a content type team and whichever you want and a view, separate view or something that then the client has to has some kind of drag and drop stuff and then wants to add um, multiple teams. You can but, all do this with this. You could just but it's a view and we want to change the order of the things. Yeah, so. yeah, definitely. Uh, so yeah, that, that's what, what, what clients ask. So, and in, in this way, especially for, for these kind of small types uh, 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 of content types, it's probably not needed to have a, a, a custom uh, content type. Um, and here as well, uh, you could do like stuff with, uh, with uh, the template. Um, if I go here and I import from library, I have one here, team member. Oh, yeah. And that has some stuff in it and then your, your client could get started. So you, either your client could make this template or you could provide it for them so they already have that and that will save you building an entire content type specifically for that. Um, team member, team member content type. So we'll go back to the slides. Con content type less. Yeah. So do we, need, do, do we still need content types? Um, yes, we do, uh, although we were claiming you do not. Um, you still do obviously need content types, um, but you need to remember that Drupal is evolving and so are our clients and especially what they are uh, expecting. And this way you could allow your clients to do much more with Drupal, much more than they are doing now and much more, have a much more flexibility than, than what they uh, are used to and they do not have to send uh, a change request for every type of change that, that they want, they could do way more uh, with this. But you do still need content types um, because, yeah, things like events, you're gonna need an extra field to say what the date is, things like that. Um, um, do not throw away content types. However, if it's in some specific cases, you could definitely move away from, from, a, from a custom content type and, and just use the page. Does it work in production? Good question because, uh, yeah, uh, it all looks very nice and well, but um, well, we, we tried it in production, or no, we tried it, we did it in production, and uh, I asked our, one of our developers uh, for a fairly big Belgian company, which, uh, and he said, yeah, okay, we dumped it down a little bit because if you give the administrator interface to the content editors, it's a little bit overwhelming. There's really much configura configurability, there's a lot of things that they can configure, but they dumped it down a lot, eh? so they only showed them like some block types and made it really easy to use. And um, it was strange because uh, a lot, uh, the developer told me, yeah, there were no complaints, and we really had to ask them if they were like, does it work? And they said, yes. And it was like, oh, because that's not what we used to know from Drupal, where we say like, editors, do, do you like it? And then mostly, like, they didn't used to like it a lot. So uh, it was really a good experience there. Uh, is there more? If the, is this for me? Uh, some, some of them. Just, just, just yeah. interrupt me. Yeah. That will be fine. So, uh, <laughs> um, some of the modules we used to, to build this. Uh, um, this one is called um, Layout Builder Model, uh, and it just basically puts everything in, in models, which, as you saw, works quite well. Um, this is the operational uh, operation link uh, to change that uh, to structure and metadata and manage content kind of stuff. Um, uh, I will have to go a bit quickly because we only have 10 minutes left. Um, so um, locking of specific content, I'll show you that one that was with, with the header so you can really lock down 
whichever part you, you want so you can disallow moving or adding new blocks or not or um, yeah, th these kind of things. It, it's really, really, really powerful if your developers know how to use it, then, then you can really do crazy things with this. Uh, so there's another slide from this, so Layout Builder Lock it's called. Um, This is layout builder restrictions, where you can restrict certain layouts to be used by certain rules and for in certain blocks. So uh, this also uh, makes it possible to dumb it down for the editors so that they can have like a nice experience using it. You don't want to overwhelm them too much with uh, everything. Yeah, and actually that's the same thing with the, with the whole library thing. Know your client in that case. Not all, not all clients will be able to manage and will cope with, with the whole library thing and then just Disable it for them and, and, and do it yourself and prepare some, some library uh, types for them or library items for them, but don't let them have edit. That's also fine. Uh, so, yeah, another slide from this um, section library. That was what I was talking about. Um, yes, exactly. So, we tackled that one. And these are models from the section library. It's also a module that you can just install and try it. It looks like this. You have a add this template to library, and then you can choose a section from the library. So it's not very, uh, very hard to use. Sorry for the Dutch text yeah, here. Indeed, sorry for the Dutch. We <laughs> forgot to translate something. Uh, Sneaked in there. <laughs> okay. So uh, one more thing about uh, about this. Um, Everything uh, usual for uh, block pre block preprocessing, everything applies. So because it's all blocks, you can just do everything you used to know for blocks. I'm not going to go there because there is uh, lots to say about that, and you should already be aware of this because blocks aren't very new. Um, but uh, there is something um, because a section, a block is in a section, and a section is linked to a node. If you want to start uh, changing the structure of pages, like for a lot of them, you cannot just hook, override, or create a class. You need to go migrate all those nodes. So that this is different than you would do it like uh, with a structured page where you can just change the template. So it doesn't work like that. Uh, here you see a loop where we loop over the entities. Then we loop over the fields. And if it's a type layout section, sorry for that, um, then you can see that we uh, loop over these items in there. If there's a block, so we're looping over the component blocks, and then you can see if it's type block content, then you can start changing things. So you could programmatically change the content in each of these blocks or these sections uh, by looping over them. This is like uh, how you should do it with layout builder and sections. This is a bit different than how you used to work with blocks, for example. Uh, and content staging, last but not least. Um, one of our uh, developers, Nginx, uh, from uh, Ukraine, by the way, uh, created a module which allows to easily export this content. Uh, you see it's, um, yeah, it's here. What It looks like this. You can export content. Uh, this is like uh, content, and it exports the everything into a, in this kind of field. They're working on making it nicer to use. Um, but with this, you could do manual imports of content. You could package your content into a module. You could update it with an update hook, or you could like drush export content and drush import content, or this allows you to let content move through environments, through sites, or like, and this is how, what we're using also in production, by the way. Uh, so we're actually using this for them to create content in a staging environment choose which one, export it, and import it into production because they like to set up the, the sections and the blocks in, in staging and import it into production, and it's ready and verified. Does it work with personalization last? Um, as we do personalization at DropSolid, we have uh, our CDP and our marketing automation. A very quick demo there. Yes, it works. Uh, that's the answer in short. Uh, what you see here is so I have this page here where there is, um, it's called the uh, purple rain. You see two blocks here. When you would visit this page as an anonymous user, you would only see one, depending on what kind of page visiting behavior that you have. So if I'm visiting more as a Mother's Day person because I came in through a, an advertisement link or whatever, I would only see this button. Why is that? Let me show you. Here on the bottom you see that this Segment selection button allows you to select a specific segment of users to show this content to. So if I update this, I would change the segment then. It would only show this block for a specific kind of content without 
uh, doing extra things. So it works with personalization as well. Yeah, and, and if you want to learn how to do personalization, we have another session um, on Thursday. <laughs> Not sure what the hour is, but, but uh, then we'll, we'll teach you how, how to do. Um, that for yourself, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Aha, the moment de gloire. How can you start with this? Well, it's beginning with this isn't very easy because it's a it's an install profile. It's a combination of modules, and there's a theme in there, and it's it's like not very easy to start. So you can you could you could, you could start with composer start project, and then the um, it's very new with the um, Drupal rocket ship Drupal rocket ship. Um, um, but uh, a few slides in the future, you will also see there's a link where you can try it online by just going online. Um, does it have issues? Um, we, there are some issues that we ne needed to work around. Uh, there's a hard dependency on the theme, uh, which isn't the bug, it's a feature, I was told. Uh, nesting of sections is also uh, currently not possible. Uh, as we're based in Belgium, there are multiple national languages in Belgium. Uh, that's important for us, and we worked with asymmetric translations for the moment. We showed you content staging, and uh, migrating to change many layouts is one, is something that you need to be wary of because you need to write a migration. We added some core patches, but you can see them in our uh, Drupal Solid page, on, on our Drupal page, and you can try it out, and this, this is where you get to try it out. So if you want to try it out, this is the moment, take your laptops, Navigate to it, take a picture, give it a try. It's on a test server, so we'll see how it handles the traffic, but don't be scared. Just if it's down, it's good. We, we didn't ask, the, ask our ops guy to, of course to not. check it. Yeah. <laughs> of course not. It was no longer my problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, um, it, it, it should be fine. So this is just a website. It will, will lead you to the, to the user reg registration page. Uh, just uh, create, a, create an account, and then you can Kind of create a, a page. We uh, didn't use the email uh, validation, so you can use any email address that you want. You don't have to give your personal email, just to type in something, it will work without email uh, validation. So go there. If you missed the, the URL and you want to see it later, come to me, talk to me. Uh, we're also, we, I don't think we have much time for questions, so uh, I think also for questions, come to us after the presentation. We'll, we're more than happy to uh, have a lot of questions. And with that, please connect to us on uh, LinkedIn or send us a mail or on Drupal.org. Uh, we had a great time here, and thank you so much.